there's this amazing physicist by the name of Dr. Robert James Moon. He was um, a physicist, a chemist, an engineer, and he's well known for applying the five platonic solids as the configuration of the atomic nucleus. His name's Dr. Robert Moon, or, and he gave us what's called the Moon Model, an incredible uh, composition and highly intelligent. He was at the level of like Einstein and um, Keeley. And basically he was saying that space can be quantized. That means space has structure. So he was the first one in the 1930s, etc., who gave us this concept that there's no such thing as a vacuum. Scientists have been talking about vacuums, that space is empty. And he, he basically tore that model apart and said, that's ridiculous. Space is based on pure sacred geometry. And the reason why he's important is that he, um, he invented the first cyclotron around in the 1930s. This is a picture of him, uh, Dr. Moon. And he's also um, had a, a key role in the Manhattan Project. That's the one where they dropped the bomb on Nagasaki Project. So it was not a great thing, but just to show that he had high intelligence, he was part of the um, atomic nuclear fission model. And then in 1984, um, he started to put, put this proposal for a geometric in, geometrical ordering of all the protons. Um, so he was basically saying that there was a model of 96 protons. So he started off with the first, uh, actually, firstly, there is no um, use of the, he doesn't use the tetrahedron because it's self dual because the shape, when you join the face centers of the four triangles, the tetrahedron makes a copy of itself. So for some reason, he, because the tetrahedron is self dual, it fits into another category. So the one that he's interested in is what's called the cube and the octahedron, because they're a pair. That means if magic spider went in the middle of the cube and said, I'm gonna join that face center, that the six face centers, what's inside of the cube is the octahedron. And complementarily, if you had an octahedron of eight triangles, the eight face centers, when they're joined, have a cube inside. So these are an eternal pair. So he starts off with the cube, and we know that the cube has eight protons, and this is the atomic the atomic number for um, oxygen. So this is oxygen having eight vertices. And, and then the shape that goes around it is we add six more protons around the cube. We add the six vertices of the um, octahedrons in this cube octahedron complex. So we have eight plus 16 is 14. And then you look at the periodic table and you say what has, um, say, 14 protons, so that must be silicon. So, so this is the atomic configuration for silicon. And then the next interesting pair, as you know, most people know that the other um, conjugal pair, conjugal means married. It's saying that the Ocosa with 20 protons and Dodeca with, um, so that's tw uh, 20 triangles and 12 faces here, pentagons. The next configuration is Ocosahedron because they're conjugal, they're pairs. So if I joined the 20 centers of these 20 triangles, inside of that is the dodecahedron. So then Moon decided to say, so going around the cube, octa and icosa, you've got to visualize them like nesting um, geometry. So when I'm saying, when I say we're nesting the five platonic solids, these that's the nesting of the five elements. This is Perhaps in terms of alchemy, this is probably one of the most powerful um, compositions of elements and geometries that we can put together. This is not exactly the moon model because we don't have the cube in the middle. We've got the blue icosahedron, and then there's icosa, tetra, um, a cube, and dodeca. So this is just to show that the only known way that we can nest the five platonic solids is when we use 1.618 mathematics. So that's just showing you the, the concept of Russian dolls where the secret to alchemy is the nesting. So so Kepler, um, so Dr. Moon had the cube followed by the octahedron around and around that we had the icosahedron and the icosahedron has 12 vertices. So now if you add the original eight plus the six and the 12, it sums to 26 protons. And that's the atomic structure of iron. So iron, as you know, is the center of the blood molecule. So, um, yeah, and then if we add um, 
Uh, then you add the sum of all of those, we get um, 46. So the magic number of protons in um, um, Dr. Moon's model was the sum of those four vertices, the four shapes, which was 46. Um, and I'll show you some pictures just to show you. The, the information that I've been researching comes from the 21st century science and technology. There, and Dr. Moon was supported to write articles in this series of magazines by Lyndon LaRouche. Lyndon LaRouche was like a Rudolf Steiner or Charles Leadbeater. And this is full of very old rare magazines. And so these were top minds who were trying to show to the world that, that atomic structure is based on sacred geometry. So with the, with the life of Dr. Moon, I'll just show you a few more pictures. Um, so what I just explained was there's the cube. We have got the cube there and then the octahedron. Right, and then we've got the icosa surrounded by the dodeca, so they're called jewels. And so Moon's model ignored the tetrahedron, but looked at the the uh, Russian doll effect of these two platonic solid jewels. And then he ended up with this kind of model here. You can see this model here of 46 protons, because when you put the dodeca around it, you get the um, 46. And the next one is there's a picture of him. So he's he's the man that says space is full of geometry. Space must be quantized. That's his key word. And I just showed you this image here, the moon model of the nucleus. So you can see the cube in the middle, octahedron around it, icosa, dodeca, adding up to 46 protons. And when we double 46, we get 92. So he had this amazing theory of nuclear fission that when one dodecahedron, which is full of those four shapes, connected to another dodecahedron, we, we ended up with um, um, nuclear fission. So this is an exciting discovery in the 1980s. Um, and the other thing with Moon, he invented a thing. Um, this is what he looks like when he had his long white hair. But Dr. Moon invented a not just the cyclotron, he invented what's called the scanning microscope tube. So it's, it's an X-ray tube which allowed physicists to change the, the face of science as we know it. So here's the first cyclotron that he built. Excuse the poor black and white images, but that's the best that we have. So this is the cyclotron. Um, and then I think this is the tube. This is here the um, scanning X-ray tube to show that's the, the design that changed the face of physics as we know it. Um, and this, this is the, the a picture that most people know. This shows you how the planets all fit inside the celestial sphere. So the planets follow the Fibonacci sequence and each, the, each planet is succeeded by a geometry. Kepler. Yeah, so this is the Kepler, the Kepler model here. So my work, as you know, has been infl influenced by Johannes Kepler, who wrote The Harmony of the World. And this is the Keplerian model that Dr. Moon was completely inspired by. But as you know, a lot of this work with Kepler was shut down. But the most famous triangle in the world is called the most beautiful triangle, triangle by Plato. And it was Kepler who carried on the legacy of the, the lost Pythagorean knowledge. And he gave us a triangle that was based on one phi and the square root of phi. It's called the Kepler triangle. And that's the key to the nesting of the five platonic solids. So what, what I'm holding here is the key to all the future sciences. When we nest the five shapes one within each other, or just nest the four jewels as Moon did, we, we're looking at the fabric of creation. We're getting to the core structure of the universe where the microcosm intimately connects with the macrocosm.